I grew up in the countryside, and in my family we've always had pet dogs. I spend many afternoons walking them through the woods and fields. But ever since I can remember, there's been a place nearby shrouded in secrecy. All I know about it is that inside there are laboratories where they test drugs and chemicals on dogs, and it's controlled by strict laws and voluntary home office guidelines. But the worrying stories I've heard about this place make me want to find out what's really going on. So I've applied for a job inside. I got the job, and I start today as an animal technician. I had the interview, and they showed me around the agricultural department, and I was quite impressed with it. I thought it looked like a normal farm to me. And um, they checked me out to make sure I'm not part of any animal rights groups. So now I'm going to go undercover. I hadn't really mentally prepared myself for dealing with the dogs, which I absolutely adore. But I got put straight in with them and looking after the puppies. There were hundreds of beagles in there, in over 30 rooms, and virtually all of them are going to be experimented on. And I found out that in my department they were testing herbicides and fungicides, and it's for Japanese companies. And they're going to put down all the dogs that they test, so none of them are ever going to leave there. It was quite shocking, really, because the little tiny puppies were just so excited and they really wanted your attention, and they're clawing at the bars, they're trying to get out. The older dogs, and they were just right in the back of the pens, and they just had these big eyes looking at you. And a few of them, they didn't even move when I put their food in the cage. So if you put your hand out to touch them, or they got too close, they'd suddenly stop and back off and, and look worried. And it was obvious that their genome, you know, every time they'd had human contact, it was probably involving a needle or being pulled or pushed about. One of the first jobs I had to do was to go and help check the dogs. Hello. Uh, OK. <laughs> Good boy. You're 1091, that's right. Your ears and your nose. No abnormalities. Just go look at your teeth. They did show me what to do, but it says in the Home Office guidelines that it has to be done by a competent person. And I didn't really know what I was looking for, and I definitely didn't feel competent on my first day at work. I was shown how to pick up the dogs. You take them by the scruff of their neck and then you support them under their ribcage with one arm to take the weight off them. But the guy that was in there with me, he'd pick them up and they'd be, you know, they'd yelp. And then he'd just hold them there and he'd start talking to me and telling me something else. And he'd, he'd just be holding it like this with this dog hanging there and all its muscles, all its skin taut over it. I was really shocked. I was just so glad that my first day was over and I could get out of there. I just never realised there were just so many experiments of that sort going on. I think of these puppies in their concrete cages and how they're sort of craving for attention and they're never going to see outside. They're never going to sort of play in grass and they're never going to be, you know, petted and loved by anybody. They're just basically going to be you know, have herbicides forced down their throats or injected into their veins or until they're put down and, and they're never going to have a life. It's now coming up to the end of my first week and today we had to go and pick up some new dogs from the quarantine unit. This one going in there too? They come from a breeding centre just down the road where they're specifically bred for experiments. <laughs> one more in there? Oh no, it's... Two loads, do you reckon? Yeah. Hello. Come on, you. Don't be all nervy. Don't be all nervy. 
the older dogs were really nervous. They don't seem to have been handled much at the breeding centre. Have they not been handled much, then? No. Oh. OK. Getting good. So it's too soon. taking me so long to clean out the cages was because I was putting too much bedding in. I was putting two spadefuls of sawdust into each dog pen. And I've been told just to put one in and it mustn't be piled up either. So these dogs have one spade of sawdust scattered over their pen, which is soiled, and, and nothing to actually sleep on, no bedding or anything. Just there, just on the concrete. thing that was really upsetting was that the puppies were all excitable and wanted to play and there's nothing for them to play with they're basically on concrete and they play in, the, in this walkway for half an hour an hour a day and they they run up and down but because it's concrete they can't stop and they go flying into the doors at the end I took what I'd filmed to show John Gripper a vet and an international expert on animal welfare so, John, could you explain to me what you thought of the way the dogs were being kept there? I thought that the pens were quite a good size and that um, the putting down sawdust and cleaning that out each day was, was, was fine. What uh, I was concerned about were, was the amount of exercise that the dogs were getting, but, but my greatest concern was there seemed to be no sleeping accommodation. There didn't seem to be anywhere where the dogs could actually... Um, sleep at night other than just on the concrete floor. In the Animals Act 1986, the Code of Practice states bedding and nesting material should be provided. Even wooden boards or newspaper would do instead of the one spadeful of sawdust my dogs were getting. The Code also says there is always the need for dogs to have regular human contact and that dogs should have access to adequate exercise areas when my dogs were left alone virtually all the time and were only let out in a corridor for up to an hour a day. I'm now in my second week and I really need to find out more about these tests. back into my unit and had a look at the books. I found out that there's this test coming up which is injecting into dogs and medical drugs. It's going to be used for scanning human livers. It's for a Japanese company. And, as I found out on my first day, there's three tests which are going on at the moment. Two are herbicides and one's a fungicide. And they're also for Japanese companies. The agrochemicals are in capsules and they're given to the dog orally, at least one every day for a year and not injected as I first thought. He's not having it. I couldn't believe it, because when I'm making up these capsules, they're taking shortcuts to make it easier for themselves. And also, they filled out the day books, and they were making mistakes. It all just seemed really sloppy. Do they often make you redo the doses? They often make you what? Redo the doses. We did yesterday. So I made the doses up with the wrong decimal, with the wrong decimal point. We're just saying to us, oh, you've got those done quick, now to go back up there and redo them. But the thing is, trying to get them exactly on the number he wanted, and the only way you can do that is, you might get one like that, but to get seven like that, when they're that small, it's near enough impossible. 
then he stood here and watched me while I was doing them again. Oh, oh bastard. Well, I couldn't even fiddle it then. Let's not for tomorrow. What's today? It's 14th today. It is, it's my, my parents' wedding anniversary. Oh, what if it's done the book wrong, and they... Even though he's not here, he can manage to do the book wrong. This morning I saw the Home Office inspectors arrive and I didn't know who they were at first because they were just dressed in suits and they had these lab coats over the top and so they could have been clients or they could have been vets. And they came in and they started chatting to the animal technicians and they wanted to know what experiments were going on and they told them that it was all capsules or pre-dose. And so they just said, oh, so there's nothing for us to see then at the moment. And, and they just started chatting about the pictures on the walls. And they didn't actually, I didn't see them go into any of the units and look at the dogs. And this is the second time I've seen them arrive. And on neither time have I seen them check any dog in my unit. Hiya. Oh. It's now my fourth week, and I'm expecting this to be the worst day so far, as they're going to start intravenously injecting my puppies with the drug used for liver diagnosis. After that, they're going to have to go through a series of blood tests all day. 1203 for 15. Uh, 22, sorry. Little buggy tails. It started off with I had to um, they had to go in a sling, and the drug was given intravenously into their front leg vein, and some of them threw up as it was being injected in. I don't know where this drug's going, dog, but the needle is not holding. It's just in your vein. Is it really viscous that stuff, then? Right, yeah. syrup. Uh, no. Every dog had already gone through having the chemical injected into its vein, and then I had to go and collect them nine more times to have blood samples taken throughout the day. Hello, sweetheart. You've had enough of this. Oh, you're such a good girl. It took them several times to find a vein, nearly every time, with the needle going backwards and forwards into the skin, and then once it was actually under the skin, they'd be poking around trying to find the vein for anything up to 30 seconds. Wow. Even the technicians were saying that these dogs were just too young for this kind of experiment. Good girl. Good girl. Shit. Can't find a vein? No. It's the word. They're too young. They are eyes, aren't they? The dogs are too young. Too young for the veins are too small. Right. They're nice and still. I don't know how to suggest you hold it. You really... See, it's got a horrible sunken neck. The first dog I did, it bled quite a bit on its chest and all its white fur around it was going quite red and, and I got blood down my arm and on my hand. And this is 1605, yeah? I've got a... No, it's no, not. It's not. 1600. Yeah, it will do. Oh, 11.21. I really felt like I was one of the torturers today, which was really tough. I felt like I was taking them out there and, and I was one of them. And um, that was really difficult. What do you think of the way the people handled the dogs? How did they deal with them? I didn't like the way the dogs were handled at all. 
I felt that they were being handled very unprofessionally, and I felt that one got the very clear impression that the technicians and the people in charge of the dogs had no sympathy for these animals at all. They were being roughly handled, and it's quite unnecessary if you want, for instance, to hold a dog to take a blood sample or to do a dressing, to have to treat an animal in, in the rough way they were doing. Under the law, these tests are only permitted if stringent safeguards are followed to prevent unnecessary suffering to the animals. And the Code of Practice states that all staff, both scientific and technical, should be sympathetic, gentle and firm when dealing with the animals. But the technicians I'm working with are really rough on the dogs, even though many of them have been here for over 12 years. two guys just messed around the whole time, making it far more difficult and meaning that they had to put the needle in the dogs over and over again, even more than usual. <laughs> Stop it! to a scientist, a specialist on medical research and animal testing, to see if the bad practice I had witnessed would affect the results. Well, from what I have seen, Zoe, it's clear that these tests are not being conducted to international standards of good laboratory practice. You can see that in the way the chemical doses are prepared, in the way that the blood samples are taken from the dogs, and in the record keeping. And these sloppy practices um, are going to make the results of dubious value. I'm now into my second month, and it's two weeks since the start of the tests. They're still injecting the puppies every day. That's a good hound. Play with your ear. Take your mind off it. Oh. Oh. See, if you just sat still. When we were injecting the chemical into one of the puppies last week, the animal technician got very angry that the dog had moved and the needle came out and so he just squirted the rest of the chemical into the bin and then I took the dog back and put it back in its cage. He said to me he didn't see that. No. When they inject the dogs, the legs swell up and the drug irritates the surrounding skin. 
Okay. Hello. The dogs are constantly monitored by a vet, but I can see the effect the drug is having on them. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, you're shaky, aren't you? You're all shaky, aren't you? I'm going to write that down. Yes. One has had to be put down already, and I found another one had excreted blood all over its cage. My dogs are now nearing the end of their life, and I need to find out if this experiment is really necessary. You're a little sweetheart, aren't you? Well, if you are. It's a little sweetheart, you are. Mm. Do you understand why they repeated the dose so many times and to such high levels with these puppies? Well, obviously, every drug has to be tested um, for unexpected effects at high doses. But I can't understand why this particular drug, which in, in human patients will only be used once or twice, um, I can't understand why this test used daily doses at 10 times the maximum human dose level over a four-week period. That seems excessive and unnecessary to me. Mm. In this case, this test has been done after the drug has already gone through two stages of clinical trials in human volunteers and human patients. So the drug company already knows what is the most effective dose to use and already knows from human studies what the li likely short-term side effects are. I'm now in my eighth week and my dogs are about to be put down after four weeks of testing and another gruelling day of blood tests. The hardest one was number 1612, which was my favourite. Yeah, I knew her character. And she was a really sweet hound. I always wanted human contact. Somehow I felt it was going to be a relief for this puppy. But it seemed so terrible that she'd had to endure so much. They'd been injecting her with the chemical every day up to today. Hi. Is that okay? Come in. I soon put the dogs down. And they seemed to be really professional in the way they did it. They just used this massive dose of anaesthetic. And they seemed really caring, but it's still really hard to see them die. I think I had a wall up through that whole process. I wasn't really connected with the fact that these dogs were dying. I basically was there to film, and it wasn't until the evening afterwards that it really sunk in that these dogs had seen their last moments of me there and had been put down, never having been outside and played, never having led normal lives for it at all. The company was asked to respond to the issues raised in this film. It unreservedly refuted the allegations of cruelty by animal technicians and systematic breaches of the Animals Act and the Code of Practice. It said, the company takes great care to ensure the effective training, the supervision and the regular assessment of those staff responsible for animal safety and welfare. The company also has permanent veterinary presence and has frequent surprise visits from the Home Office Animals Inspector. The company is confident that all staff involved in the safety and welfare of animals are caring and undertake their duties responsibly and with sensitivity. When asked why the tests involving blood samples and intravenous injections were necessary when the drug had already been tested on humans, the company made no comment. I've now left after two months undercover. I was really shocked by the cruelty I saw and the pain inflicted on the animals. The images that I saw there are going to stay with me for a long, long time.
something like that. Let me see.